course, there's been so much in the news about him. And, um, you know, he's been everywhere, done everything. And he told me he thought it was maybe the nicest, the most wonderful all-around hotel he ever stayed in. Yeah, it's always yeah. been in the top ten. Yeah. Okay, Paul, are we ready? Anytime. Okay. <coughs> well, Andrew, I know everybody's under the gun here for time, so I'm going to plunge right yeah, into no. this. Um, we'll first of all, one of the things that uh, amazed me so as I watched uh, capturing the Freedmans is how much the family was willing to reveal of themselves. Did you really have to work at that, or did it just happen? Well, I think that the family. Do you want me to repeat the questions a little bit, or will they uh, be hearing no, you I, also? No, I, I will repeat the questions. Good, at good. The end. Okay. I think the Freedmans are interesting in that they obviously uh, are incredibly open. And that, that goes for the fact that they uh, speak openly about their lives, about very private things, and also that they videotape such incredible um, uh, moments in their lives, things that you, you can't imagine until you see them. And I think um, that comes from a certain kind of optimism in a way. You know, there, there's something about them that makes them feel, even today, that the more you know about them, the more they'll be okay in your eyes. And I think that, in a way, is true also, you know. What conclusions did you come to? Well, one conclusion I came to in making the film is how hard it is to reach a conclusion. Um, I think that the search for the truth in this film was so difficult because every time somebody would tell me something, I would, you know, immediately think, well, all right, well, that's, that sounds pretty reasonable. That person's very articulate and cautious. And then two minutes later in the film, they totally impeach themselves, and they show you that they have uh, some perception that's completely not borne out by the facts. And so you have to constantly question whether the person that's telling you something is telling you something that is just in their interest to tell you, even if they feel they believe it, or whether they're telling you something that's genuinely true. You know, that, that makes it very hard to understand the truth. You know, I think there is a truth at the core of some of these, of some of these issues, um, but getting there is very uh, difficult. And I think I've tried to leave it for the audience to, to absorb everything that they can get from the film. You know, in this film and in this case, there was no trial. And as a result, the audience in the film becomes sort of the jury because, you know, we're given all this information. In addition to the fact that we're given access to the Freedman's own house. So you feel that you were there and maybe you have enough information to make some kind of a determination of what you think. Were you convinced by the end of your filming sessions that he really was a pedophile? Well, I think it's clear that Arnold was a pedophile and, um, you know, it's almost like I started there and then I made the movie because, uh, you know, he admits to, to, uh, to being a pedophile and not just having that in his thoughts but also in his actions. Um, but I also think the movie for me turned out to be about so much more than that, um, that I just became engaged in this family and their struggle. And it, it could have been almost anything. It could have been alcoholism or it could have been drug addiction, but obviously he had um, a problem which, which in the end destroyed his family. Whether that was fair or not, whether the, the society reaction to it was appropriate or not is something I think the audience has to see for themselves. How do you think society should deal with pedophiles? Well, I think that um, there's no place in society for that kind of crime. And there's no getting around that. And that's one of the sort of heartbreaking things about somebody who has a problem like that, is that they have no place to go. Uh, the other heartbreaking thing is that sometimes they're committing awful crimes, and so you don't have all that much uh, um, uh, sympathy for them. The difference here is that Arnold's 18-year-old son gets accused of the same crimes, which are far mm, harder to believe uh, for an 18-year-old kid who would have been 13, 14, 15 when a lot of these crimes took place or allegedly took place. So, uh, you know, to me it became the story very much of Jesse, his son, um, who is uh, in an incredibly difficult situation in the film. and you know, becomes the person at least that I identify with and I worry about when I'm watching the film. Are you still in contact with any of them? I'm still in contact with all the Freedmans, actually, except for Seth, the middle brother who, who never wanted to participate in the film. Um, you know, I called Elaine Friedman on Mother's Day. I don't know what that says about me, but, you know, I, I, I feel like, you know, when you make a film with a family for three years, you just get engaged with them and you get to know them quite well, maybe better than anybody else in their lives in a way. And, uh, you know, who else do you know who you've spent three solid years examining? You know, eventually you know them better than you know some of your family members. Andrew, how did you fund the film? 
Well, I was lucky because uh, I was able to fund it. I had a couple of friends who agreed to participate. And in the beginning, it didn't seem like it was going to be such a long journey. Um, and um, I also had a producer who uh, was a guy that I went to school with. And he had a production company. And they did a lot of the work without getting paid for it, which, which happens a lot in a documentary. So you know, that was, uh, that was manageable. Was the family ever paid anything? The family was never paid anything. I, I think it would have compromised the, f the, the film to have paid the family. You know, I didn't go in making a film about this at all. You know, I started out making a, a documentary film about professional children's birthday party clowns in New York City, um, as hard as that is to believe given what we ended up with. Um, um, you know, I think that um, it was clear to them from the beginning that I wasn't going to make their story. I wasn't going to be propagandized. I wasn't going to be trying to sell someone's position but that I was going to let everybody speak. I was going to let the police speak, and the judge speak, and the detective speak, and the freedmen speak. Um, and in the end, I think that's why the film feels more balanced, is because even the freedmen thought that was OK. They said, you know, everybody needs a chance to talk. And in the end, we feel that we'll be vindicated by whatever anybody says. And were they pleased with the film? The family likes the film a lot. I think they, you know, they're so used to having been reviled in the press that the idea that suddenly there was a more balanced picture of their family is kind of uh, refreshing for them. Um, you know, I think Elaine likes the film maybe just because she gets to finish a sentence in it. Um, and I think, uh, you know, Jesse likes the film very much because coming out of jail, you know, you're the lowest person on the societal totem pole. There's nobody worse than you. And I think he feels like that's really not a fair assessment of who he is. And I think it's not a fair assessment of who he is. So uh, from that standpoint, I think he's very happy with the film. OK. All right. I think we better just uh, get it. Uh, you ready? Okay. Andrew, how did you get the family to reveal so much about themselves? Well, I think, first of all, you start out with a family that's, that's fairly willing to expose themselves. That's right. Uh, OK. Um, How do you think, how do you think society should handle pedophiles? I'm going to answer that. Mm -hmm. one. Uh, well, I think that they're obviously a problem, and there's something. Okay. There. All right. Was the family paid to participate? Well, no, we never paid the family. I think that would have compromised what we were trying to do. Okay. Um, okay. Um, what is the family's reaction? Let me change that. What is the Friedman family's reaction to the film? Well, I think the Friedman family are happy that the film was made for various reasons. Okay. All right. Uh, let's see one more. Um, okay. What conclusions have you reached about this family? Well, reaching conclusions about this family is very difficult, but. OK. Do you still keep in contact with any of them? I, I do keep in contact with them. OK. All right.